in my last video about using Linux like it was 50 years ago, where I was using Linux using commands only available in Unix 3rd edition, some people highlighted that I wrote ANSI C instead of original Kernigan and Ritchie C, that's K and R C, to write my line number program. And yeah, they're right. Uh, habit just kind of took over. So let's go back and look at that one again. I'm back on FreeDOS and I'm going to use the IA16 version of GCC because I really like that compiler. And we're going to edit with Edlin because it's got a great retro feel. Now, uh, Edlin is installed on every FreeDOS system and you can run a 16-bit version of Edlin as Edlin 16. So that's what I'm going to use here. Let's go ahead and get started by typing uh, Edlin 16 for line num dot c. Now this is uh, Edlin 2.22. I've compiled my own version of Edlin, the uh, Edlin that's distributed with FreeDOS 1.3. It's a little out of date. Um, and so if you don't have Edlin 2.22, you can still do everything I'm going to do here. It's just that it's not the latest version. All right, let's remind ourselves how to use Edlin. So I'm going to do question mark, and that'll give you a usage for using Edlin. Now, if you compare this to what we could do under ed, on Linux, some of the commands are slightly different. Like for example, to append on uh, Linux, we could give it a line number and then we would say A and that would append after that line number. But here the A command doesn't take a number. It's just append after where we are right now. We can insert before a line, so that's that's good. Um, other commands are kind of similar, and so we'll we'll just kind of go with what we have, and we'll explore those differences as we get there. Let's go ahead and start by uh, inserting some new lines where we are right now. Now we need to do an include uh, standard io.h as always. Now last time when I did this. Uh, the way that I wrote the ANSI C was I did an int main and then I did an int arg C and a care arg V and then I wrote my main function. Well, that's that's ANSI C, <laughs> so we don't want to uh, we don't want to do that. So let's let's uh, list we have. We'll get rid of it. So we'll say uh, from line. Uh, we'll just get rid of everything starting at the int and we'll get rid of everything at the end of the lines into the file. So we'll do three comma five and we'll delete that. So we'll do. Um, uh, and insert at line two. All right, so we're gonna do, uh, now we do it as Kernig and Ritchie style. So we'll say main uh, arg c and then arg v. And now we have to provide the types for those. So it'll be an int on arg c and it'll be a care for arg v. All right, now we can write our main function. So it's gonna, uh, parse the command line and try and treat each argument as a file. And so we'll need int i so we can actually run through the command line. Uh, but we also need to open some files. So we'll need a file pointer here. We'll do file of p file. All right, so the usage for this is basically uh, line num and then possibly uh, some files on the command line. And if we don't have any files on the command line, we'll just read from standard in and just print a standard out like always. So let's go ahead and check. If we have the uh, command line options, we can just do a for loop right away. For i equals one. And then as long as i is less than arg c, then we'll increment i. And let's go ahead and open up our file. So p file is f open of arg v i. And we're going to read that file. And uh, if we were able to open it, so if p file, uh, well, actually, if we weren't able to open it, then p file will be returned as null. So let's deal with that one first. And now we need to print out a message. And so I could do like an f printf here, but let's let's do it really old school. We'll do an f put s. Uh, and we'll say cannot open file, and then we'll print it out to standard error. And f put s doesn't actually print a new one at the end. Put s would, but f put s does not. And so now I can write after that, I can say f put s, and then the name of the file we tried to open, argvi, and put that out to standard error. And since it doesn't put a new line at the end, we need to do that manually at the end. So we'll do an F put C to put a single character out there and we'll do a new line character on standard error. All right, so that's that's if we couldn't open the file. If we could open the file, then the else block will take over. 
And now we can call the line num function using p file as the input and standard out as the output. And once we've done that, we can then uh, close f close uh, p file. And that would be the end of our else block. And that would also be the end of our for block. All right, now that for will not actually loop even the first time if we don't have any command line options. And so we would need to test for that separately. So we can say if arg count, the arg c is one, then that just means we only have the name of the program as arg b zero. So um, if that's the case, then we'll just need to call line num using standard uh, in as the input file and standard out as the output file. And that is that would take care of no uh, command line options. And now we can go ahead and return back the operating system. And that's the end of my edit. Now let's go ahead and, and write what we have because I don't want to lose what we have. Uh, let's do a listing of where we are. Okay, so that shows us the last... Uh, 10 lines or, or so of where we are. Uh, I want to actually uh, now insert a, uh, a function at the top of my source file uh, called line num. So let's remind ourselves how to go back and look at the top of a file. So I'm going to say uh, start at the first line and we'll go down to, I don't need to go down very far. So we'll down like down five lines and we'll list those. All right, so I want to insert my function at line two. So again, in under ed, I'd be able to say 2a, and that would start appending after line two, but that, that's not the usage in Edlin. We actually need to do a 2i. This will start inserting at line two. And so I'll just uh, add here a line num function, and it will take two options, in and out. And the first one is a file pointer called in, oops, in, and the file pointer for the second one is called out. All right, now I've got my function, and we're going to read individual letters from the standard, or from the input, uh, and we're going to uh, write them to out, and uh, uh, that means we need to have a variable here called int. That is a uh, letter variable, and I just spotted my line num function uh, uses int instead of uh, in, so I need to go back and look at where I was. So let's go ahead and edit line three. Uh, we'll do line three is going to be uh, line num of in and out. All right, so now I've edited that line. So let's go ahead and look at lines one to let's say 10, just to remind ourselves where we are. All right, so I, uh, I wanna start editing again at line eight. So I'll do eight I. All right, so we've added our, our integer variable for letter, and we also need to have uh, an integer variable to kind of keep track of what line we're on. And the line we're gonna start out as one. And before we do anything, we can actually just print out the line number for line one. I don't need to do anything fancy like a f printf um, to you know the formatted uh, output because we know that it's going to be one. So we'll just say f put s of one space padded put that to the output, and then we'll do a loop here. So a better way to do this would actually be to like read into a buffer, but we're just going to make this a very simple program that anybody can read. So we're going to just read one letter at a time. This is going to be slow if you're reading from slow media, um, or if you're on DOS and it's going to take a, a while to, to read uh, uh, like we're doing here. But for what we're doing as a, as a quick test, it's okay. So we're going to we're just do this one letter at a time. So we'll do a letter, as long as letter is reading from F get C uh, from the input, and as long as that's not equal to end of file, it'll be end of file if we're done. And so as long as that is not end of file, we can do this loop. And that loop is going to be, we're going to read the letter and we're going to immediately print it out again. So we'll do an F put C of the letter to the output. All right, now what if that was a new line? Well, if the letter was a new line, 
then I'm going to do an F print F and I need to actually print out the number of a variable. So I need to do formatted output here. So we'll do print it to the output and that will be a uh, percent to D and then a colon of whatever the line is. And actually what I want to do, let's do this. Let's do, let's add one to that line before we print it out. Okay, and so now we've printed out the line number. Let's let's also check for the next time we do anything if we actually have reached the limit here, right? So the reason we wrote this program uh, under Linux as uh, 50 years ago is because we were looking at the output from NROF, which assumes an 80 column page and 66 line per page, and so we're just seeing you know where uh, line or where page one and page two were. So we're going to we're going to do the same thing here. We'll just say if the line is 66 then we're going to say uh, we're going to reset line back to it doesn't need to be 1. Actually it can be 0 because we're going to always increment 1 to the line before we print it. So if we do line is 0 then the next time we uh print out a uh, a line number it'll actually be line 1. So we'll do that. And then we can do that. Now, uh, somebody had asked me, could I do this using Majulo? And actually I could, but uh, I think this is a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to just do it this way with uh, testing if it's line 66, then resetting it back to line zero. But yes, you could absolutely do uh, Majulo on this one in 66. Um, and that would, that would work just as well. All right, so that's testing if line is 66. And then that should be the end of what I need to do for testing if it's the letter. So I think I can just end that one there if the letter. And I think I can be done with my while loop. And then that's the end of my function. And that's the end of my uh, insert. Let's write that back to disk and let's do a listing of where we are. So let's look at my file before I actually compile it. Start at line one and we'll start listing. And so that is showing my line num function, uh, reading from in and writing to out. And it's uh, defined my variables. And it looks like I have a uh, an extra space in there and it's okay. I'm just gonna, oh, actually I don't because it's, uh, it's nine, uh, one through nine doesn't have a space uh, padding on this. And so it looks like I've got one extra line in there, uh, but I actually, uh, I actually don't. So our extra space in there, but I actually don't, uh, on ed, it would be, it would be different, but here we're printing out the line numbers. And it's going to print out, uh, the first prompt and it's going to go through that loop and it's going to print out the output. And it's going to then check if we've, uh, reached the, uh, end of a boundary 66 lines and it'll reset the number. And then we'll do 24, start at the 20, 24, and we'll start listing. And then uh, that's the end of our while loop. And then the main function is what actually reads the command line, opens the file. If it can't open it, then it generates an error. Otherwise, it uh, it prints, uh, uh, calls the line num function to read from that and then print a standard out. We'll do line 46 listing. And then at the end, it just uh, closes the file. And then if it couldn't run through that loop, it's going to, uh, just read from standard in and write a standard out. So we've already uh, written our file. So we can go to Q. Ooh, let's, uh, that, that suggests I actually made an edit already. So we'll do write. Okay. So that's good. So now we can do Q. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Really important edit. All right. So let's do a, uh, compile on this. So we'll do I 16 GCC. Uh, we'll send the output to line num dot exe of line num dot C. And it's given me a warning here. Uh, it's giving me a couple warnings. One is uh, the functions uh, don't have a declaration. And that's actually pretty common if you go back and look at the uh, Kerning and Ritchie C book. But the other problem is uh, my um, uh, I, when I check for a, a new line and when I try to print a new line, uh, I forgot that I'm supposed to uh, double up on my backslash. Let's do an Edlin 16 on... Uh, line num dot c and let's start listing at line one and so there on c on line uh, 17 that's where i'm supposed to make one edit so let's go and fix that here 17 and now i'm going to edit that one to say uh, if letter is 
And then I have to double up my backslashes to say, uh, if it's a new line, then that will happen. All right, so let's do, let's print that out again. So we'll do start at one and uh, print that out. And so now line 17 looks correct. Uh, and now I need to uh, go a little bit further down. So we'll say line 24 list. And then where was I printing my output? Right there in line 43. So we'll do line 43. We'll edit line 43. And we'll change that to F put C. And then I need to double up in the backslash N to standard error. All right, so that looks good. We'll write that back to disk. We'll quit. And we will do another GCC to line num. And we should still get the warnings that I didn't declare a variable type on main or my line num function, and, but that's okay. And there we go. Now our program works and we can call line num on, let's just do it on uh, line num.c. We'll look at the actual source code for this program. It's, I don't, I think it's less than 66 lines from what I saw before. So we're actually gonna, not going to roll over that. But let's do this. Let's change the program so that it rolls at line 50. You can see we've got 56 lines in here. So we'll do uh, edlin16 on line num.c. And that was up in the line num function. So we'll just uh, start printing in line one. And there it is on line 20. I need to do line 20. And we'll say instead of checking for line 66, we'll say if line is 50. And that's just so we can see it uh, roll on the source code that we're working on right here. Right, and then quit. And then recompile my program. And we expect those warnings, and that's okay. And we can now run the line num against line num.c, and we should see it roll at 50. And so this, if you're curious, is how you would uh, write a program using original Kernigan and Ritchie C or KNRC uh, style syntax. What do you think of this video? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, before I go, I have to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. I know I say that a ton, but it really does matter. Uh, some of you support me at a higher level, and I want to thank you here especially for that. Visit our website at freedus.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Mastodon, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.